Friends, welcome to Williamsville United Methodist Church. We're glad that you are worshiping with us on this Christmas Eve. Merry Christmas to you and your family. We're here in sunny Buffalo. Not. It's a blizzard out there. There's a reason to be online. It's disappointing. I'm saddened that we're not together. But a weary world still rejoices. Let's praise God together. Hear now this scripture reading. This is the story according to the messengers of God, present then and present now. We remember the angel appearance in Zechariah, husband of Elizabeth and cousin of Mary, foretelling the birth of their son, John. The messenger says, do not be afraid, Zechariah, for your prayer has been heard. Your wife, Elizabeth, will bear a son and you will name him John. You will have joy and gladness and Mary will rejoice at his birth for he will be great in the sight of the Lord. He must never drink wine or strong drink. Even before his birth, he will be filled with the Holy Spirit. He will turn many of the people of Israel to the Lord their God. With the spirit and power of Elijah, he will go before them to turn the hearts of parents to their children and the disobedient to the wisdom of the righteous, to make ready a people prepared for the Lord. And so it was. Elizabeth, even in her old age, was finally pregnant with John, who could prepare a way for Jesus' teaching many years later. Six months later in Nazareth, a city in the rural province of Galilee, the heavenly messenger Gabriel made another appearance. This time, the messenger was sent by God to meet with a virgin named Mary, who was engaged to a man named Joseph, a descendant of King David himself. The messenger entered her home and said, Greetings, favored one. The Lord is with you. Do not be afraid. Mary, you have been found with favor with God, and now you will conceive in your womb and bear a son, and you will name him Jesus. He will be great. He will be called the Son of the Most High, and the Lord God will give him the throne of his ancestor David. He will reign over the house of Jacob forever, and his kingdom there will be no end. The Holy Spirit will come upon you, and the power of the Most High will overshadow you, Therefore, the child to be born will be holy. He will be called the Son of God. And now your relative Elizabeth, in her old age, has also conceived a son. And this is the sixth month for her, who is said to be barren, for nothing is impossible with God. At first perplexed by this, Mary received and resolved to offer herself as a vessel through which more love was born into the world. But Joseph, her fiance, needed some encouragement for becoming pregnant before their marriage was a serious offense in the eyes of the community. A messenger was needed. Joseph, son of David, do not be afraid to take Mary as your wife, for the child conceived in her is from the Holy Spirit. She will bear a son, and you are to name him Jesus, for he will save his people from their sins. All this takes place to fulfill what has been spoken by the Lord to the prophet. Look. The virgin shall conceive and bear a son, and they shall name him Emmanuel, which means God is with us. And so Joseph stood by her, and she grew with the presence of God within her, and the story continues. In those days, a decree went out from Emperor Augustus that all would be registered. This was the first registration and was taken while Quirinius was governor of Syria. All went to their own towns to be registered. Joseph also went from the town of Nazareth in Galilee to Judea to the city of David called Bethlehem because he was a descendant from the house and the family of David. He went to be registered with Mary to whom he was engaged and whom was expecting a child. And while they were there, the time came for her to deliver her child. And she gave birth to her firstborn son, wrapped him in bands of cloth and laid him in a manger because there was no place for them in the inn. 
In that region there were shepherds living in the fields, keeping watch over their flock by night. Then an angel of the Lord stood before them, and the glory of the Lord shone around them, and they were terrified. But the angels said to them, Do not be afraid, for see, I am bringing you good news of great joy for all people. To you is born this day in the city of David a Savior, who is the Messiah, the Lord. This will be a sign for you. You will find a babe wrapped in bands of cloth and lying in a manger. And suddenly there was with the angel a multitude of the heavenly host. We are the messengers this year. We are the messengers every year of this first message of Christ's birth. You are the multitudes who have gathered this night, whether online or in your homes, quietly with family, whether hunkered down in this blizzard storm, this is the night to proclaim the good news. Friends, say with me, glory to God in the highest. Glory to God in the highest and on earth, peace and goodwill among all people. When the angels had left them, the shepherds said to one another, let us go now to Bethlehem and see this thing that has taken place, which the Lord has made known to us. So they went with haste. And they found Mary and Joseph and the child lying in the manger. And when they saw this, they made known what had been told to them about this child. And all who heard it were amazed, amazed at what the shepherds had told them. Mary treasured these words and pondered them in her heart. The shepherds returned glorifying and praising God for all they had heard and seen and all that had been told them. Friends, this is a word of God that is still speaking. Let us rejoice by saying thanks be to God. Each year since I was in fourth grade, the first present opened under our tree has been this one. It's a reminder that before we exchange gifts as a token of our love within a family, Christ was and is and will be our first gift. Jesus, the reason for worship and celebration. Today, this Christmas Eve, we rejoice. The line, A Weary World Rejoices, comes from the Christmas carol, O Holy Night. Hear these words with me. O Holy Night, the stars are brightly shining. It is the night of our dear Savior's birth. Long lay the world in sin and error pining, till he appears and the soul felt its worth. A thrill of hope, the weary world rejoices, for yonder breaks a new and glorious morn. Fall on your knees, O oh, hear the angel voices, O oh, night divine, O oh, night when Christ was born. O oh, night, O oh, holy night, O oh, night divine. What a beautiful reminder of the splendor of our Savior's birth, that after our world lay in sin and darkness, it is struck with a thrill of hope. The birth of any baby is an exciting moment, but the song goes on to remind us that this event was not a single joy-filled incident. The birth of Christ brought about a new and glorious day. Even the worldly joys of Christmas Lights and cookies and decor and gift giving and family gatherings, while wonderful, are only temporary. That's where Jesus comes in. He knows how hard it has been for us. He knows we have been in a season, and in Buffalo we've been an even longer season, with the onset of this snowstorm and interruption to your Christmas. God gives us something, though, that helps us something that reminds us that there is hope. God reminds us both through the word and by inspiring talented songwriters that the only thing we can cling to and for is hope in him, Jesus the Christ. May that name be our song and prayer as we rejoice together. Merry Christmas.
As we go forth from this time of worshiping God with one another, may we go forth in the peace, the hope, the love and joy of our Lord and Savior. And may we know this blessed truth as we say, do not be afraid. Merry Christmas. <laughs>